All right, so uh, we just finished up building the uh, Sony Open Devices project with the Android Open Source project for the discovery, and uh, I'm pretty excited about some of the stuff that we're going to do next. Um, first off, I do want to let you guys know that I uh, fixed my VNC connection, so it's not so bad as it was before. Uh, hopefully work a little bit better for us, and uh, much, much smoother than it was. So I appreciate your patience on that. But as well, um, I'd like to look at some of the things that we can uh, start working on here to, uh, to learn some really great stuff together. So what I'm going to do this week is build Lineage OS 17. Um, mainly because it's been requested and because I do believe that uh, if you're just starting out, building Lineage is the best place to start. If you can build it on Lineage, then you can branch out to your other uh, custom ROMs. Everybody wants to start with their favorite custom ROM and that's really great, but uh, I do recommend beginning with Lineage if it's your first time building a ROM. Uh, so we're going we're gonna to start there, uh, but then some of the things that I want to look at after we build that is things like how do we add gaps to our ROM. Okay, uh, And then I want to start moving out into different ROMs, say like AOKP or um, AOSP Extended or something like that. And then I want to look at how we change the tree from lineage to one of those different custom ROMs. And I just feel that this is going to be a, a pretty good uh, experience for for all of us involved and so I'm really looking forward to it and I hope you are as well. So I'm here on my build machine uh, and if you need some help with what are the requirements for building Android I really recommend that you go and check out my video on that. I, I do have a video specific to that. Uh, what are the requirements for building Android and uh, look at those. Um, and we're also I want to say also that if you need some help with Linux commands, like how to use Linux in the graphical user interface or how to use Linux from the terminal, the typed commands, uh, I have video series for both of those. So I, uh, I just suggest that you check those out if you need some help with that. Right now I'm going to make a new folder uh, for Lineage and we're going to call it Lineage 17. And we are going to jump on the web here, and we are going to find GitHub Lineage, helps if I can spell it right, Lineage OS. So if we go to Lineage GitHub, we're going to look at the instructions that we need to follow for um, working on and beginning uh, Lineage OS. Now, my machine is already set up for building, but I want to show the commands that you would need as well um, during this process. Because notice that the only thing it says to do here is to repo init the repository for Lineage and to sync it, and that's it. But that doesn't really show everything that we need to do. Now, I know this might get a little tiring for some of you that have seen the video series uh, for the, a long time. Uh, you've, you've been watching for a while, you're like, wow, we keep going over the same thing. But if somebody's just joining and this is the first playlist that they come to and they want to see how do I build Lineage OS start to finish, then I want to show them how that's done. So one of the best things that you can do is go to the Android Open Source Project and uh, you could type several different things like setup or something like that. And it'll probably get you up to this, set up your Android um, development. And what we want to look at is building, right? But we'll go to the start here. And it talks about the requirements. And I will just briefly touch them here. It recommends a 64 bit, well, you, <laughs> you mandates a 64 bit environment. Uh, and it uh, recommends at least 250 gigabytes of free space to check out the code and 150 gigabytes to build it. 400 gigabytes is Google's recommendation. 
of space available on your machine, and they recommend at least 16 gigabytes of RAM or swap, especially if you're running Linux in a virtual machine. Uh, and it's going to talk about some other software requirements, stuff like that. So, I don't think there's too much else we need in here. So we'll go straight to our establish a build environment. So uh, one of the things that it says is setting up our build environment is what do you need to install. So here we have installing the required packages on Ubuntu 14.04. You need a 64-bit version of Ubuntu. 14.04 is recommended. So per AOSP put together by Google, 14.04 is still the version they build and test on for making Android. However, I'm using 18.04 Bionic Beaver, and if you're building the newer versions, I kind of recommend going with 18.04 just because getting OpenJDK 8 on your machine is going to be a lot simpler. But, in either event, you open up a terminal, and you triple-click this line, and middle-click to paste it into your terminal. And it says, hey, I want, I want the... Uh, switch user and do something and I didn't specify what user so it's going to use the root user and I want you to apt get go out and fetch these things and install all of these programs it's going to ask for your password and uh, it says oh there's actually an update for a few of these for me so okay why not we'll say yes uh, if you already have them and they're all up to date it'll just say it's current up to date like it did in the last video that I did um, however, there's a few updates to some of them there, so we'll go ahead and get the latest version. That's fine. And then it downloaded it, and then it's preparing and unpacking, preparing and unpacking. Essentially just installing and setting up those programs on your machine. So down here I'm scrolling through the other options. Uh, we don't really need to worry about uh, any other version of Ubuntu because we're not using the older versions. Um, there's some notes about setting up some common outs. You don't really need any of that. I wouldn't worry about it. Um, and then it just goes into setting up the Mac OS build environment. So once you have these programs downloaded, then you need the repo tool. Now notice that our instructions here tell us to use repo init, but if you don't have the repo tool installed, that's not going to work. So, we go back to our instructions here, and we see setting up for a Macintosh, and lots of interesting uh, things there that don't apply to us. I don't have a Macintosh, fortunately, so I don't have to worry about that, but if you do, you can read through those. We click on downloading the source, and here we are into installing repo. So, again, you would just take these commands, triple click them, and put them into your terminal. So you're making a directory in your home folder called bin. And I do want to I do want to specify something real quick here. Notice I'm at the dollar sign. Dollar sign means I am not the root user. I'm a regular user. You should not be at the pound sign or hashtag, which means root user. You want to build Android as a regular user, not as the root user. Uh, particularly due to some permissions issues that you're going to run into during the build if you start building as a root user. So I want to make this directory my home directory forward slash bin, but it says it already exists because I've already made that, but you would do that. Uh, then you would paste in this path to add to your regular path of environment variables this bin. And what this means is it just tells you, hey, if I want to run some program, check in this bin folder to see if that program is there first, and if it's not, then look in the normal places. Now, I've already done this, so doing this again would add it twice to my list, and I don't want to do that, so I'm going to delete it. But you would just run that command. Then, you're going to curl, which means to download, from Google the repo tool and put it in bin repo. Just like so, we'll go ahead and do it. I already had it there, but if at worst it just would be the newest, latest version. Then we're going to change or modify it to make it readable and executable 
and uh, so that way people can actually run this as a program particularly people that are in the right group which would be you so we do and now we have the repo tool so this is where we would stop following the AOSP instructions we now have all the tools we need to do the build so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and bookmark this because I'll probably use it in the future you know I'm gonna bookmark this too because this is probably handy so now we see we're ready to start building lineage now if we remember I'm here in my home directory right which would be here right lots of junk in there that's cool um, but I need to build it over here for uh, for our purposes so I'm going to open this place in the terminal instead and that's where we'll continue our work but in either event you would make dir and uh, make whatever the name of your directory need to be in this case I already made that directory in just the graphical user interface we're going to cd into that directory that we just made CD means to change directory. And once again, if you need help with Linux commands, I do have a playlist just for learning about Linux that I recommend you check out. So we're ready to start following the remainder of the instructions from Lineage here. So what we want to do is triple click that, and we're going to paste that into our terminal. Repo init so initialize a repository I want you to go out and get it from this github repository of github.com lineage os android.git but the branch needs to be lineage-17.0 so I hit enter and it's only going to take a few minutes to do this part this is where it sits there and decides okay what exactly uh, do I need to um, fetch to be able to get all of this um, manifest together so if we look it downloaded something but if we look in our folder normally it would look empty if I press control H we see the repo is right here and control H again hides it so it makes a hidden file for us with this dot repo and what it did is it downloaded our manifest and a bunch of other pieces here so if we look at our manifest real quick we see that the manifest for Lineage 17.0 includes all of these things. Now it starts by downloading regular things from AOSP. Then after it's downloaded those things from AOSP, it gets some things from Lineage as well. So let's see if I can find one in here. Okay. So then, for instance, these are all AOSP from remote AOSP, remote AOSP. And then if they don't have that remote on there, it's actually coming from Lineage OS. So you see this is Lineage OS material that's added on top of or instead of some of the regular AOSP material. So that's what we have right now. Now, we could also run this with the command repo init dash dash depth equals one and then saying I only want 17.0 I don't want all the other material right so it has been initialized just to get that material and then we can do as it says here repo sync now if you're going to do uh, repo sync uh, it's going to take a long time as it goes through and gets a lot of that data even if you're only doing a depth of one it's still going to be quite a bit of material to get uh, you can also say dash C to specify you only want the current branches right the current branch that you have specified you have a depth of one seems a little bit uh, redundant but it's to make sure you download the least amount of material as possible okay and uh, so and then you can give a J number 
for however fast or slow you want this to download at, right? Um, in this case, I'm just going to give it the regular default, which I think the default is four by itself if you don't specify a higher number. But don't quote me on that. I could be wrong. It could have changed over the years as well. So we hit this repo sync. And so as I've shown in previous videos, but for those of you who are new, what it's doing is it goes out, it reads that manifest we just looked at, and it goes out and grabs each one of those things. It's like, oh, you need this Lineage OS, Android vendor, NXP open source, something or other, this test module and something or other, and this Nevin. And so it goes out and it fetches that, it downloads it, and then puts it where it needs to be. Um, now you notice our folder's not filling up, but it actually is. What's happening is these uh, objects are being downloaded now, and they're being downloaded to these places. And here we see all the material in there. And this, of course, is all hidden normally. So if you don't have, if you haven't pressed like Control H, you won't see it. It'll just sit here like this. And so for hours and hours and hours, you'll wait while this downloads. Well hours and hours and hours for slow internet people like myself maybe not so many hours for some of you who have much faster internet but as it downloads it's putting that into that hidden folder then it's going to do a checkout at the end and it's going to put all of those things that it's checked out into the main folder and then we'll be able to work with it so this is uh, this is how we get started building Lineage OS 17. Hopefully that was helpful for you guys. We're going to continue through with this to build for the uh, Discovery XA2 Ultra because it's a phone that I have. And uh, we can actually see the end results when we're done. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and look forward to uh, going through the rest of it with you.